welcome to Inside Marquette Basketball with the head coach, Shaka Smart. I'm Bob Brainerd. It's pinch hitting for Sophia Minert this week, and a lot to talk about this week and the week before. It's been a good run for Marquette Basketball Coach. Start with the win in New Jersey against Seton Hall. You talked about matchups and that uh, Seton Hall presented some difficult matchups, but how were you able to exploit those matchups, have a good, solid first half, and then really explode in the second half? No, we just try to make it about us, uh, our guys playing at our standard. Uh, we felt like, you know, in some of the previous games, there were some opportunities to, you know, get some stops that we let slip, slip away. So we really put an emphasis on the defensive end and on finishing off possessions. And I thought our guys did a really good job in the first half, being intentional. Seton Hall, it was a lot like last year's Seton Hall game at their place. They were really ready to play. I mean, they were motivated. They wanted to pay us back. Uh, for us winning here. They were playing extremely hard. They made some tough shots. And our guys just hung in there, kept battling, stayed together. You know, I thought uh, David Joplin came in and gave us a lift in the first half. And I thought all of our guys played pretty gritty on the defensive end. And coming out of halftime, uh, that's what we call the sixth round. So the first four minutes of the second half is just so pivotal. And I thought our guys really ramped it up. You talk, always talk about you know, defense leading to offense, and, and you could really see that formulate in that game against Seton Hall, how when you, when you crank it up a notch on defense, the offensive opportunities seem to get a lot easier and a lot better looks for your guys. Absolutely. Yeah, as you know, we chart deflections, and we feel like deflections are a great indicator of energy and obviously defensive disruptiveness, but they also correlate to scoring points. And so against Seton Hall at our place, we were able to get a season high 47 deflections. And then at their place, we were, we were at 44 for the game. So really, really good number against a Big East team. The goal is 32. So to beat that by double figures is, is really good by our guys. The Big East player of the week for the week that was is Cam Jones of Marquette, 22 in that game against Seton Hall. He's a player that at times he'll be quiet, he'll have quiet first halves and then all of a sudden just explode. In this game, you saw the explosion in bursts. Yeah, I mean, he can score in bursts and he's a guy, he shoots what we call that moon ball. He shoots it way up and then finally it comes down. A lot of times it goes in the basket, so. Uh, I told him, you know, a long time ago, I said, you're better at shooting than me, so I'm not going to say a whole lot to you about your shooting, but I'm going to be on you about your defense and, you know, all the cultural elements that make up, you know, who we want to be as a team, but he's really growing. You know, you're talking about a guy now who's played 50-some college basketball games, so just so much different than where he was a year and a half ago coming in here as a wide-eyed freshman. And uh, 18 points chipped in by uh, Oso in that game. Fifth straight double-figure outing for him. I, you can see the growth, too, with him offensively, Shaka, where when you see the 18 points, you're not surprised with that output anymore. Confidence. You know, his confidence has really grown. Uh, as you know, we put the ball in his hands quite a bit. It's a unique matchup for other teams to have to deal with because he's out there playing, quote-unquote, the five spot. But for us, he's a guard and that gives other teams trouble. I thought he did a great job finishing. He was seven for seven, didn't miss a shot, and also got to the foul line. Previously, back in Milwaukee, it was Marquette against Providence. Now, you probably didn't call this a revenge game because of the double overtime loss that you suffered to the Friars. No, we did. Oh, you did? Oh, you did. Absolutely, our theme of the game was payback. You know, for whatever reason, in a very short time, you know, we've been at Marquette, our staff, and this team for less than two years. Providence has become a real rival, and uh, I think they feel the same way about us. So that game on December 20th is one that, uh, you know, really, really stuck with us and bothered us, and uh, one we felt like, you know, we could have grabbed hold of, but they really took down the stretch. Um, but as you know, when games are over, you can't change that game. The good thing about playing in the Big East is you get to play everybody twice, and uh, the theme for the game was payback. So, as a staff, how did you prep your players to flip the script against the Friars when you played them in Milwaukee? Well, I mean, we've used this theme in the past with different teams, and what I've learned over the years is the emphasis isn't so much on what you want to do, but on how you need to do it. And so for us, the how uh, went into, you know, things like rebounding, the way we wanted to defend the post, the way we wanted to put pressure on the basketball, those were all the things that we knew would go into winning. 
Tyler had another stat sheet stuffer line in that Providence game. He was distributing, he was scoring, he had the awareness, he was playing the defense. A lot of times, if you want to have that script play out the way you want, it's got to be Tyler being involved like that. Well, I mean, we talked about Cam, we talked about Tyler now. Our guards in general, you know, they, they really set the tone for our team, uh, particularly on the offensive end because the ball's in their hands so much. And, you know, in that particular game, uh, Tyler did a great job of kind of setting a pace for us. And Providence is a team normally, it's really, really hard for him to get assists against because they don't really help. But he, I thought he did do a great job moving the ball around. Yeah, Cam again, you know, had, a, had a, another 20 point outing in that game against Providence. But uh, besides you know, the obvious with Cam and Tyler, who were unsung guys that got the job done in that game against Providence? Oso was huge. Yeah. Uh, he was big for us. I mean, Providence is a team that you have to stand up against because they're very physical. You know, they foul a lot and they have probably the most physically aggressive player in the league in Ed Croswell, uh, their, their senior big, and that's who Oso was matched up with. Um, so Oso did a nice job. I thought Stevie Mitchell, uh, Omax Prosper, they came in, you know, with aggressiveness on the defensive end. It really, really helped us. And then our guys that came off the bench, you know, those guys have really been giving us a lift, and that allows us to have a nine-man rotation. So as you said, Coach, it was a rivalry game. It was a revenge game. For, for you guys. What's it like when you're in the locker room and it's mission accomplished? Like, okay, we even the score with those guys. Well, you know, interestingly, go back to before the game, Dwayne Wade gave the pregame speech because as you know, the 2003 team uh, was here for the 20th anniversary celebration. And he gave a great speech, but he also said to the guys, like, we can't lose this game. You know, we have to win this game. <laughs> and so, it, you know, put a little bit of pressure on those guys, but, you know, that's part of playing at this level. Uh, so in the locker room afterward, you know, guys were really, you know, pleased with the fact that we were able to, to grab hold of the win. You know, particularly when we're playing at home, there's a real responsibility that our guys and our staff feels that we want to win for everyone associated with Marquette. And it was such a special night with honoring Dwayne and Travis and, and all those guys. We, we certainly didn't want to end the night on the wrong foot by not winning. So it was, it was great that our guys took care of business. So we got to remember, man, those EGBs helping each other, those huddles. Also, we came out of one huddle and you walked to each guy and you gave each, you gave each guy an EGB. That's huge. That stuff adds up and that's why we won. Everybody is. Yeah. Good job, Good job. Don't finish line on three. One, two, three. Don't finish line. Shaka Smart's interview is presented by Wintrust, Wisconsin's bank, the official banking partner of Marquette University. Golden Eagles fans, open a Marquette checking account with Wintrust, Wisconsin's bank today and score golden perks like a $50 opening bonus, free ATMs nationwide, and your very own exclusive MU Golden Eagles debit card. Wrap the blue and gold at home or on the road. And don't miss this golden opportunity to let everyone know. Scan now to open your account today. Win Trust Wisconsin's Bank. Proud to be the official bank of Marquette University. Now's the time for a healthy start. So let's move. Let's rest and recharge. And put our health first. Let's be well. To do that, let's eat well. Breathe deep. Find joy in the little moments. And do what we love with who we love. Together, let's live well. Aurora Healthcare. When you've been injured, you need a winning team on your side. Call Gruber Law Offices today. A proud partner of Marquette Athletics, Gruber Law Offices, one call, that's all. We first opened during the Great Depression, and we've been open for over 85 years now through everything that's come our way. We've stayed open by working to make life easier, better, and fresher, by making a real difference in the communities we serve, and by being the kind of place where your money always goes a little further. 
That's why we're open. Come see for yourself. And welcome back to Inside Marquette Basketball with the coach, Shaka Smart. All right, dial it back to a couple weeks ago and the Xavier game in Cincinnati. Slugfest, you know they always are going to be that way. Why are they always that way against Xavier, coach? Tough place to play, Cintas Center. I remember as a young, young coach working at the University of Dayton, going in there for the first time. We were in the same league at the time with Xavier and just being like, wow, this is one of the best environments there is. And I thought our guys really fought and competed, you know, grabbed the lead for us at different times. Uh, and then we go down the last minute of the game and it's tied, you know, and it's anybody's game. Uh, their kid, their guard, Sule Boom, made a tough 18 foot pull up over Oso's contest. And then we came down the other end and we missed a layup. And then we had to kind of play the foul game. But I was proud of the way that our guys fought and battled. Tyler had a heck of a game. You mentioned Tyler, uh, 20 points in the first half. So they're cutting him off. They're not allowing him to distribute as much as he would like, but they kept giving him lanes and Tyler kept taking the opportunities when they presented themselves. Yeah, so when we run pick and roll actions in our offense, teams have to decide, are they gonna help off different guys? Are they gonna stay home with a guy like Cam Jones or David Joplin, Omax, and so a team like Xavier, Providence, normally those guys, they stay home and they say, hey, Tyler, you got to score. And so when you see Tyler shooting the ball a little bit more often than he normally does, uh, that's why, because of the way that the defense is guarding him. But we love it. You know, we want him to be aggressive and we want him to you know, really put the defense in a bind where they've got to decide, well, we're really not comfortable with him scoring all these points but we also don't want him to, to distribute so much because he's such a good passer. So he's getting better and better. I love the assertiveness that's growing in him. The, uh, you, you mentioned this goes right down to the wire. So when this game is done and you're in the locker room or you're breaking it down, what is the lesson learned there? You always talk about finding ways to close out games in the Big East. You couldn't get it done there, but lessons learned from even coming close against Xavier? Well, I think the biggest thing you got to take out of those kind of games is – what are the handful of plays that we could have done better? Uh, what are, uh, are different things that happened well before the last minute of the game that we can control? And then can we internalize those experiences as coaches, as players, without being deflated? When you get to this time of year, if you sustain a tough loss, I mean, there's going to be, you're probably not going to win every game. Um, the biggest key is you can't go into the next game deflated. But it happens to so many teams because we're talking about human beings. And so I thought our guys did a really good job kind of taking ownership of, hey, here's some things we could have done better. Here's some stuff where we need to grow. And then we mentioned our mindset going into the Providence game right after. That was also aided by the fact that we were coming off of a loss. And number six UConn came into Milwaukee. And the Huskies, they presented a whole lot of other issues. But I, again, your guys, I think they handled the moment, Shaka. They really were ready to play that basketball game. Well, you know, good teams present issues. And UConn, you know, for the first half of the regular season, you know, has been the class of, of this league. They won 14 consecutive games. They were ranked as high as number two in the country. Scoring at a ridiculous clip, and I think they were a top five defensive team in the country and so watching the tape it was easy to see why I mean those guys they were they have great length they've got athleticism they've got physicality at different positions uh, I thought our guys did a terrific job hanging in there we got down double figures in the first half and it would have been easy for us to wilt a little bit or lose faith but the guys really really came together Sean Jones deserves unbelievable credit for coming in the game and just being such an incredible spark. Uh, so much so that the guys after the win voted him the domino of the game. Inside Marquette Basketball is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare. Live well to be well. Now's the time for a healthy start. So let's move. Let's rest and recharge and put our health first. Let's be well. To do that, let's eat well. Breathe deep. Find joy in the little moments. And do what we love 
with who we love. Together, let's live well. Aurora Healthcare. Golden Eagles fans, open a Marquette checking account with Wintrust Wisconsin's bank today and score golden perks like a $50 opening bonus, free ATMs nationwide, and your very own exclusive MU Golden Eagles debit card. Wrap the blue and gold at home or on the road. And don't miss this golden opportunity to let everyone know. Scan now to open your account today. Wintrust Wisconsin's bank, proud to be the official bank of Marquette University. Mom! Yeah! <laughs> Become who you're truly meant to be. Marquette University. Be the difference. We first opened during the Great Depression, and we've been open for over 85 years now through everything that's come our way. We've stayed open by working to make life easier, better, and fresher, by making a real difference in the communities we serve, and by being the kind of place where your money always goes a little further. That's why we're open. Come see for yourself. Welcome back to Inside Marquette Basketball. Bob Brainerd along with Shaka Smart. The Providence game, we talked about it briefly, but here's a little bit more. 2003, it was 20 years ago that the Marquette Golden Eagles took a team to the Final Four. They were all back in Milwaukee to celebrate. 20 I, years, Reaper. I don't even think words can describe it, honestly. Uh, I was driving in this morning and just kind of reminiscing on the times, and it's, re it's really special. Uh, man, it's been 20 years. Uh, can't believe it just to be around my teammates again uh, 20 years later. We all look like we still can play. It's a blessing and super grateful for this opportunity to be here tonight. It means a lot. Uh, it means we're getting older. Uh, so to finally come back and celebrate, you know, the accomplishments of what we did 20 years ago, uh, I think it's a special night for all of us. It's always special to get back together. And fortunately, we had such great chemistry that that chemistry never really changed. You get us all back in the same room again, and it's like 20 years ago, like nothing has changed, which is pretty cool. You don't see that too often. I've been waiting for this for quite a while. <laughs> you know, seeing these guys that were just immature college students grow to be responsible adults, and now they have their own families. So it's pretty cool to see them now as family men. Obviously, in, in the 20 years that have passed, it's like we were in college, Chris and I as freshmen, and now our, we, you know, we each have several kiddos here running around. And so I think that really probably is the most special part of it. The team was put together really well. You know, our leader, Coach Tom Crean, did a really good job of getting the right guys, you know, to come play together. And uh, we bought into the system. Just the thing about it being 20 years and to be back in a game, it's like I remember when the 77 team would come back when we were playing, and I was like, those guys are really old. I guess we're officially old now. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> This current squad, they are much talented than we were back in 2003, that's for sure. The thing I love most is they have a pass-first point guard. Obviously, we were playing, it was Travis Diener who wanted to shoot the ball he every single lot. time. No. Lot. I love watching Tyler play because Tyler plays the way basketball is supposed to be played. You know, I don't think there's a better point guard in the country. You know, we were driving down and I asked my son who his favorite player is, and I said, it's got to be Oso, right? He has yeah. just been so surprising, but he's so fun to watch. Oso, that's my man. Uh, you know, I got a chance to, uh, you know, talk with him a bit before the season, and uh, I love the way he's developing. Uh, you know, I'm seeing him go to the free throw line and knock some free throws down, but he's also being, you know, being a big man down low. And they play hard. They're tough, they're a gritty group. Obviously, they're talented. Uh, but I love what coaches, Coach Smart is doing with this crew, and I just love the intensity that they play with on both ends of the floor. Shock has done an incredible job of building that culture, culture that I think goes back throughout the years of the really good Marquette basketball teams. Uh, I think everyone that's worn the jersey is ultra proud of the way the team is playing this year. I love what Shaka Smart is doing here. I'm glad that Marquette trusted him to lead this roster. They have a well-balanced team that's really deep. And I think that if they continue on this course, they can do a lot of damage in March. The school is so special. It's so special. And each one of these members of this team 
helped make it better and they left it in a better place than they found it because they came in here and they understood they were playing for more than just themselves and their families. They were playing for the best crowds and the best six-man student sections in the country. There's nothing that leads to success more than having a genuine, unbelievable belief in one another. And that's what every one of these guys did. Go Marquette! If Shaq had called, I think all 12 of us or how many guys we had in that team would, would step on the floor and put on that jersey again. You know, I wish I had some eligibility left. I'll go out there. I can give him about two or three, two or three spot minutes. That's about all. <laughs> if Reaper plays, I'm in. I will launch a half-court three if I need to tonight. And I was always shooting half-court shots, so we're good either way. <laughs> I know that things like this and, you know, honoring the past and respecting the past, they're all important to what you do here in the present. Yeah, you know, uh, to me, it's really important to connect the past uh, of a program with, with such a, a rich tradition to the present and the future. For you, do you remember this, this team 20 years ago? Do you remember them going to the Final Four and what Wade and, and Robert Jackson and Novak? And, do you remember that group? Of course I did. Now, Steve Novak will get mad at me because he says <laughs> I always bring this up. But since you asked, <laughs> I actually coached on a staff of a team that beat Marquette that year. I was at Dayton. And we had a thrilling overtime win at UD Arena in Dayton. But I knew the team really, really well. I was a video guy, so I was in charge of creating all the edits and, and the personnel. And, you know, even before coming to Marquette as a coach, I could have told you every player that was on that team. And, man, they were so much fun to watch because of the different personalities. And the fact that, you know, Travis, you know, was such an incredible leader telling everybody where to go and what to do. And it's like, who is this little guy? <laughs> um, and then obviously D. Wade. I remember the first time we played them. So his first year playing here, thinking, man, this guy just moves differently than everyone else. <laughs> and everybody has seen that when he was young. And now, obviously, he's, he's become one of the best of all time. Inside Marquette Basketball is presented by Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. Injuries can affect every part of your life. Trust our team at Gruber Law Offices to get you back in the game. Gruber Law Offices, a proud partner of Marquette Athletics. One call, that's all. Golden Eagles fans, open a Marquette checking account with Wintrust Wisconsin's Bank today and score golden perks like a $50 opening bonus, free ATMs nationwide, and your very own exclusive MU Golden Eagles debit card. Wrap the blue and gold at home or on the road. And don't miss this golden opportunity to let everyone know. Scan now to open your account today. Wintrust Wisconsin's Bank, proud to be the official bank of Marquette University. Now's the time for a healthy start. So let's move. Let's rest and recharge. And put our health first. Let's be well. To do that, let's eat well. Breathe deep. Find joy in the little moments. And do what we love with who we love. Together, let's live well. Aurora Healthcare. We first opened during the Great Depression, and we've been open for over 85 years now through everything that's come our way. We've stayed open by working to make life easier, better, and fresher, by making a real difference in the communities we serve, and by being the kind of place where your money always goes a little further. That's why we're open. Come see for yourself. Inside Marquette Basketball is presented by Wintrust, Wisconsin's bank, the official banking partner of Marquette University. Aurora Healthcare, live well to be well. And by Gruber Law Offices, one call, that's all. Welcome back, Inside Marquette Basketball, Bob Brainerd and Shaka Smart. All right, you get a little breather, a little bye week here. You don't have a game for a week in Big East play. So, Timing good for that to kind of lick the wounds and kind of reset everything? 
You know, we don't control the schedule, so we don't really get caught up on whether it's good or bad. It's more about how can we utilize this time um, physically, mentally, uh, continue to come together as a team around our goals. So this week is a valuable opportunity to get on the practice court, work on some of our you know, individual areas where we need to grow. Something that you said after the, the, the Seton Hall game, and you talked about the personality of this team. You said, you're, you're like me and a lot of folks that watch Marquette basketball, you said you're old school. But the guys, a lot of the guys, guys like Cam Jones, they're so loosey-goosey, they're having a good time. I think the important thing though, Shaka, is that they know when to flip that switch. They know when it's time to be all business on the court. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because sometimes, you know, their outward silliness or looseness is, is kind of their way of letting go of some anxiety when they actually are pretty locked in. So Cam Jones has his earphones or whatever he had, and he's singing at the top of his lungs. <laughs> And it's like uh, Beyonce and Rihanna, and he's just singing. And I'm, you know, again, this is if this was me, you know, 25 years ago, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I might be listening to music, but I'm not singing, you know. And I'm, I'm just stone faced and locked in. But as I told you, I can't shoot like Cam Jones. Right. I can't score like Cam Jones. So uh, I would much rather have him out there playing than me. So you look at the first half of the season that you guys have played, you're currently in second place. I know you know and you've been reminded about the preseason poll, which you don't control either. Pick ninth. Tyler had something to say about that, being, being picked ninth. Well, I think what our guys have done is shown we can play with anyone in the country. And uh, we certainly can go anywhere and be highly competitive. And now we've got five home and five road games remaining in Big East play. It's going to be you know, a heck of a challenge, uh, as it always is, going down the stretch of league play. But for our guys, you know, we always talk about being in our circle. And what that means is being the best version of, our, of ourselves and helping each other and taking a win anyway mentality. And so we're going to take it one day at a time and enjoy the heck out of it. Thank you, Coach. That'll do it for another episode of Inside Marquette Basketball. I'm Bob Brainerd. He's Shaka Smart. See you soon. This has been a presentation from Learfield.